And then they're like, oh, you're very trustworthy. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, I went through a little breakup, and um, I'm over it, which is why I wanted to talk about it. When I had a girlfriend, I remember still noticing other women, and in my head I'd be like, oh, if I didn't have a girlfriend, I might talk to her. And now that I don't have a girlfriend, I'm like, I was wrong about that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is tough. And, uh, so... <laughs> And people always ask your horoscope. That's a flirty question, right? But I'm a Scorpio, which is a bad first impression. People go, ooh, can't trust Scorpio. So sometimes I'll just say I'm a Libra, and then they're like, oh, you're very trustworthy. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, yep. <sighs> Libras are the best. <laughs> Which is the most Scorpio thing you can say. <laughs> Just lie. If they find out later, hey, you lied. You're a Scorpio. You can be like, of course I did. <laughs> I'm a Scorpio. <laughs> Sting. <laughs> so I'm trying to meet people. I'm trying to meet people the old-fashioned way, which is in person, right? And, uh... I was, at this, I was at this birthday party, and this woman smiled at me. I was like, okay, I got to say hi to her. And uh, I walked up, and I froze. And she was polite. She told me she was a personal trainer. And I was like, I need a personal trainer. And I was like, come on, brain. <laughs> and my brain was like, you do. <laughs> Your muscles are bad. <laughs> and she goes, okay, I'll train you. And now I just pay her to do her job. <laughs> you can approach anyone who you immediately offer employment to. <laughs> Day one, she goes, how many pull-ups can you do? And I said, five. And then I realized you can't lie to somebody that's about to see how many pull-ups you can do. <laughs> So I said, possibly three, a little rusty. <laughs> and I got up there and she goes, no, you gotta extend your arms all the way. I was like, zero. <laughs> but she's a trainer, so she goes, pull. Go. And I didn't know what to say, I had just met her. I was like, it's not pulling. There's something wrong with it. You think I did too many yesterday? <laughs> I'm always doing five to three. <laughs> and she goes, you're doing these, I'll spot you. So now this woman I thought I was flirting with is underneath me, <laughs> lifting me with her strength. <laughs> We're almost there. <laughs> we did it. Wow, we're so strong, Natasha. I could tell that was mostly you. My arms gave up a while ago. <laughs> people say, oh, be persistent. I don't know if persistence works anymore. Like, that, that's how people used to do it. Any older couple I meet, it's almost always the same story of how they met. The wife will be like, well, he asked me out, <laughs> and I told him to scram. <laughs> and then he kept trying, and now we have 12 children. <laughs> I can't imagine using persistence anymore. Like, if I ask a woman out and she says no to me, I'm usually like, oh my, I'm so, I'm so sorry I even asked. Like, I, it's probably offensive. Um, <laughs> I can't imagine coming back a week later and being like, hey, remember how you don't like me? 
How about now? I got a trainer. I live in, uh, I currently live in New York City, but I didn't grow up there, and it's a stressful vibe there, and I'm trying to learn meditation. And I didn't realize um, all it is is you just close your eyes and worry about everything. Just, <laughs> oh, no. That's my mantra. Oh, no. And you just keep doing that until you give up. <laughs> Makes the rest of the day so much easier. You're like, wow, I'm not alone with my thoughts anymore. <laughs> this normal stress is easy compared to that nightmare. <laughs> huh. When I moved to New York, I had to get a new mattress. And uh, that's a unique shopping experience because you actually lay down to test it out. They're like, what do you think? I think it's weird that you're here. <laughs> if I'm really gonna get a test run, I'm gonna need to get naked and eat Chipotle. <laughs> do you have New Girl on Hulu? And she wanted to show me a different bed than the one I was testing. She goes, let me show you our most popular one. And you'll never guess, but it cost more money. <laughs> and she goes, you'll never want to leave this bed. Yeah, isn't that called depression? <laughs> I've never had a tough time staying in bed. <laughs> and... Uh, I hate how they sell you on the investment of a mattress. They're like, oh, it's such a good investment. An investment is something that goes up in value. <laughs> I've never heard of anybody making a fortune flipping mattresses. <laughs> but they try to logic you. They're like, you spend eight hours a night. That's a third of your life. Wouldn't you want to invest in a third of your life? Well, you can't apply time to money. Then it'd be like, you spend more time in your socks than in your house. <laughs> huh? Wouldn't you want to drop a hundred grand on some nice socks? <laughs> Invest in half your life. Get some socks that massage your feet all day. I was thinking about it, and uh, why aren't there socks that massage our feet all day? <laughs> that actually does sound like a good investment. <laughs> I wish I understood investing. I was reading this study, well, I was reading an article. I saw a headline, to be honest. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> it was interesting. It was a good one. I learned if you own stock, it means you own part of that company. I never knew that about stocks, and I've always loved Disney ever since I was a kid. I was like, I could just own Disney? And I started off small. I bought one Disney stock, $100. I own a Disney. I do. Now, <laughs> the company's worth $150 billion, so I realize I'm not a majority owner. <laughs> But I still feel that pride, you know? Somebody was like, I love Beauty and the Beast. I was like, thank you. <laughs> I can't take all the credit, you know? <laughs> Part of being an owner is knowing when to step back. <laughs> Let the talent do their thing. I don't have any kids. I've never been more undecided about anything than whether I want to have kids someday. Because on the one hand, when I see a baby, I've never been like, need that. <laughs> I'm usually more like, why is this baby in my area? <laughs> Which isn't the most fatherly vibe, you know? <laughs> on the other hand, it does sound really fun to just create some tiny people who have to hang out with me. I think I'll be that kind of dad. Billy, get over here. I didn't do anything. I know, but I'm bored. Compliment me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, but apparently a person's name actually influences who you grow up to become. Like, if your name's Dennis, you're slightly more likely to become a dentist. It's true. You're attracted to things that sound like your name. And, uh, like, Larry's are more likely to be lawyers. I thought about it. My name's Joe. One letter away from joke, I was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's applicable. <laughs> and the more you look for it in the world, the more you see it. Bernie Madoff, don't give that guy your money. Last name's <laughs> Madoff. <laughs> I looked up the guy who started Craigslist. First name's Craig. That's spooky. <laughs> Wow. What are the odds? <laughs> Andre the Giant was seven feet tall. Yeah, last name was the Giant. <laughs> you know he's gonna be big. So I've been wanting a dog real bad. I told my therapist, she goes, maybe you're lonely. Yeah, I feel like you probably got that from me coming to therapy. <laughs> I wanted a dog so bad when I was a kid, I got a cat. Not the best dog replacement. <laughs> That'd be like asking for a Super Nintendo and getting a cat. <laughs> uh, 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 can't play games with this. So I went on petfinder.com and it shows you all the cute animals available in your zip code. But somebody told me you can't trust Petfinder. It's kind of like Craigslist. They'll put up fake puppy photos to lure you in, and then you show up. You're like, hi, I'm here for Captain Snuggle Pants. <laughs> and they're like, oh, he was just adopted. We do have one left. It's a chupacabra. <laughs> What's his name? It's Damien. <laughs> He's a ball of energy, don't make eye contact. <laughs> He's looking for his forever home. We think that's how long he lives. He's a demon. <laughs> He's a half goat, half demon chupacabra. <laughs> I haven't adopted a dog yet. I have saved one dog's life. I was driving on a country highway in Virginia and this old beagle hopped out into the road and stopped and just turned, just as if to be like, take me, it's my time. <laughs> and I was like, not on my watch, and I swerved. And I hit a patch of sand in the shoulder and skidded for a long time into a stop sign, and the blade came right through my windshield and stopped just short of my face. And there's this moment of shock where I didn't even know if I was alive. And then I heard this knock on my window, and I heard a voice go, dude, you should just hit that dang dog, dude. <laughs> and that's when I knew I was alive, you know? <laughs> I don't think anybody would call a dead person dude twice. <laughs> and you gotta call the cops to report the accident. The police officer showed up. He goes, wow, you got really lucky. I've seen stop signs slice people in half. <laughs> okay, this rural cop has seen plural stop sign massacres. <laughs> Can we address this issue? <laughs> this seems like a big problem. Octagons of death on every street corner, <laughs> dicing their way through America. How about a softer stop sign material? <laughs> Let's get some nerf stops out there. <laughs> and then I realized, if I could have died in that moment, my survival response is really bad. Because as I was skidding toward the stop sign, I didn't even put my arm up, I just went, stop sign. <laughs> I think my mouth was open, just like, this is a surprise. <laughs> And whenever, you know, having a near-death experience, it made me, you know, think, think about, you know, think about the bigger picture. And I was watching this documentary about the universe that was saying there's more stars in the universe than all the grains of sand on Earth. 
I was just like, who counted the sand? <laughs> All the beaches and deserts, are they counting the sand on the side of the country highways? I'd like to see a documentary about that guy. <laughs> he seems impressive. And then I realized, I remembered I was at the beach and I saw this guy looking down kind of sad. And I was like, is everything okay? And he looked up and he was like, Gah! I think that was the guy. I think I set him back a few years. I'll never forget that moment when I was younger that I learned that the sun is also a star. Blew my mind. I was 27. <laughs> a lot of people think uh, Google has made us dumb because we're so dependent on it. But I Googled it and it's not true. <laughs> According to Google, we're not dumber. It's just changed the way our brains work, which is kind of a polite way of calling us dumb. <laughs> It's like, you're not dumb, your brains are just different now. <laughs> but basically it said, our brains kind of have folders, you know, there's a folder for geography, folder for math, and now with Google, there's just one folder and you open it up and it's Google. <laughs> I just hate that I can't ask questions anymore. Like, what temperature should I bake cookies? Just Google it. Oh, I'm sorry, I was trying to have a human connection. <laughs> Did I offend you with my friendship? <laughs> do you want any cookies or do I have to Google that? <laughs> I got a little stressed out about Kim Jong-un earlier in the year. Uh, my favorite fun fact about Kim Jong-un is that he's a huge fan of the Chicago Bulls because he grew up during the Michael Jordan era. And I was like, that's when I grew up. Am I as old as Kim Jong-un? <laughs> the dictator of North Korea? So I looked him up. I was like, I'm older than Kim Jong-un? <laughs> what have I been doing with my life? I, uh, I've, done, I've done just a little bit of doomsday prepping in my life. I ordered a survival backpack off Amazon.com with a Christmas gift card. It's a $37 uh, apocalypse backpack, good for seven days supply. Um, I have eaten four of the power bars. <laughs> so I think I'm down to three days. I don't know how the doomsday preppers have the willpower to resist that daily temptation of dipping into their supply. Like, we gotta go to the grocery store. Do we need to go to the grocery store? <laughs> Let's just get our extra chips. <laughs> but the hardcore doomsday preppers say not to wear glasses to get LASIK eye surgery because if you wear glasses in the apocalypse, your glasses will break and then I guess cannibals just eat you. <laughs> So I signed up for LASIK, and then at the last second, I started to get panicky. I heard a horror story, and my therapist goes, well, one thing you can do is just go through worst case scenario. And I'm like, okay, the lasers explode my eyeballs. <laughs> and then I'm blind forever with pain in my eyes. <laughs> I guess it's not that bad. <laughs> And she goes, is that really reasonable? I'm like, you're the one that said worst case scenario. <laughs> what kind of therapy is this? If we're really doing worst case, worst case would be that I then sue the eye doctor and lose. <laughs> he countersues, he wins. <laughs> now I'm blind and broke. Stumbling around, because I'm newly blind. Worst case, I stumble on a dead body. Didn't see it there. I'm like, wake up, cold man. 
and now my fingerprints are all over a body. I'm accused of a murder I didn't commit, sentenced to life in jail. Blind, with pain in my eyes. My nickname is Old Wacky Eyes. So I still wear glasses. Oh, thank you. That's so nice, thank you. I think that is my biggest fear, going to jail for something I never did. Because our justice system is a jury. That's just 12 random people. It's like, excuse me, do you guys understand what's going on? No. Why are you in charge? We're being forced to. They said if we didn't show up, we would have to go to jail. The sooner you're guilty, the sooner we can go home. So when I get really paranoid, I'll play this game in my head called, Can I Prove Where I Was At Yesterday? <laughs> and it's fun. You just pick a time yesterday, see if you can remember where you were, and then see if you can prove it. That's the hard part. So I'll play for real. You can throw any time at me yesterday. I'll see if I can prove where I was at. 7 p.m. I, um, I had flown to Salt Lake City yesterday. I was doing a gig in West Jordan. I stopped to get a little food at, at a restaurant. I put it on my credit card. That's a time stamp and a cent. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anytime I use my credit card, I'm like, beep, not going to jail for whatever just happened. Nice. That feels good. Oh, I love using my credit card. My debt has skyrocketed, but... Fortunately, not a phobia, just a concern. All right, any other times yesterday? We're good, 7 p.m.? 2 a.m., wow. That is a bit of a murder time. <laughs> That's tough. That's where this game gets tough, late at night. 2 a.m., I was asleep alone in my bed. I took no lover. <laughs> no alibi, no time stamp, no way to prove it. Guilty as charged. <laughs> can't afford to sleep alone. <laughs> Which is a good pickup line. <laughs> like, hey, will you go home with me tonight? I'm afraid of being charged for murder. <laughs> hey, thank you guys so much. I'm Joe Zerman. I appreciate it.